Welcome to Digital Marketing Intelligence for Shopify, Ask the Experts. Our weekly podcast and video show offers Shopify's ecosystem of brand owners, store developers, app providers, investors, and marketing agencies, insights from case studies and discussions with marketing and e-commerce experts. Grow faster with tips, tricks, and proven strategies and learn what's new in e-commerce digital marketing for 2022 and beyond. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Digital Marketing Intelligence for Shopify Ask the Experts. I'm Marissa Morgan, your show host. I'm also the Business Development Director here at Engage. On behalf of myself and the entire team at Engage, I'm excited to welcome you to today's show. Today, we're talking about the most cost-effective ways to fund your e-commerce brand. And our guest expert is one of the leading voices in e-commerce fundraising. He's also the co-founder of Uncapped. I'll be introducing you to our guest in just a moment. Before we get started, though, of course, a quick word from our sponsor, Engage. We are super excited to announce that as of May 2022, we have officially launched our SMS messaging for Shopify stores app. I'm going to go ahead and pop up on the screen if you're watching the video version of our show, uh, the link so you can check out our new app. If you're listening to the podcast, that website is www.ngagge.com. What is the SMS messaging for Shopify store app from Engage? Well, it's an opportunity for you to take SMS marketing to the next level. If you're not familiar with the conversion rates kind of working right now in terms of SMS messaging and email. SMS messaging is blowing email out of the water with a 98% open rate. Why is that? We know that's because everybody is on their cell phones and SMS messaging is a great way to be talking to your customers, to be talking to your prospects. And the Engage SMS messaging app for Shopify gives you the chance to take advantage of that amazing 98% conversion rate. You can do things like build your customer list faster, create automated marketing campaigns, promote new products, create a subscription-based list, and also be able to give your customers discount codes and opportunities to communicate what they're looking for with you through SMS. If you visit www.nengage.com, you can actually put in any U.S. cell phone number, get a free demo of how the app works. And right now we're offering a 30-day free trial with 500 messages that you can take for a test drive. So check it out. It's the brand new, as of May 2022, Engage SMS messaging for Shopify app. If you're not using SMS marketing, you are missing out on a whole lot of business and money on the table. And luckily, our app doesn't need any sort of technical staff to help you integrate it into your current platform. So check it out. Super easy to use and super cost effective. We're going to learn about right now cost-effective ways to raise money for your e-commerce business. And I'd like to welcome our guest expert today, joining us from London. However, I found out he's a Canadian based in London. His name is Asher Ismail. And if you don't know who Asher is, you need to. Asher is the co-founder of Uncapped, the fastest, most affordable way for founders to fund marketing, inventory, or hiring. He is a serial entrepreneur, and I can tell he's very business-minded. I could just tell that in our conversation prior to the show. And he's a business scaling expert that has raised over $100 million in capital for his companies from angels, VC, crowdfunding, and also banks. Along the way, Asher experienced the uncertainty of bootstrapping, the risk associated with debt, and then the frustration of repeatedly giving away more equity than he was comfortable with. These experiences have inspired him to start Uncapped so entrepreneurs could access funding without interest or dilution and spend their time, I love this, executing rather than fundraising. He is also the founder of Intertech Diversity Forum, sits on the advisory board of Global Tech Advocates, and in 2021, he was entered into the Entrepreneurs Hall of Fame. Fun fact about Asher, he's lived in six countries and counting. Asher, welcome to the show. Where have you lived? I know you're right now in London, but you're a Canadian man. Tell us all the places <laughs> you've lived, because it sounds like you've had quite the experience in your business career, but also in your uh, kind of, you know, gypsy style life living all over the world. 
<laughs> well, I'm Marissa. Thanks so much for having me. Really great to be here and looking forward to the discussion. Uh, yeah, I've, I've lived in a lot of places in the world. Um, you know, I, I was originally born in born in Canada, but then, you know, moved to the U.S., ended up, you know, living um, in the U.K. and then in Paris for a bit, spent some time in Germany. And actually, Uncapped, we are, you know, a fully remote company. So we have team members in 18 countries. Incredibly, we serve founders in 22 countries. Um, including the U.S., U.K., Germany, Poland, Spain. Uh, so, so yeah, really, uh, really international, I guess, from the start. I love that. I myself have not lived in about six countries, but about six states. So I was born and raised in Connecticut. I went to college in Florida. I moved to Texas for a career and then continued to follow that career to Los Angeles. And now I'm based in Minnesota. So I always say I feel like I've done kind of a full circle around the United States it's fun to have lived so many places, I'm sure, um, not only around the world for you, but having a fully remote team, right, operating in over 18 countries. That's got to bring a lot of, they always say two heads are better than one. I'd say 18 countries and 18 different experiences and lifestyles and, and personalities in your team probably brings a lot of, of positive influence to the way that your comp company operates. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. And it's also helped us, you know, scale really quickly. You know, uh, we're a pretty young company, but, you know, just, just over a year ago, we were probably 10 people and now we're over a hundred people. And wow. you know, I think that wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't being able to be in this environment of hiring remotely and finding the best people around the world. So I'm a real big advocate of that approach. I know a lot of, a lot of entrepreneurs tell me, you know, I can't imagine running a remote company. And I say, you know, I can't imagine running a hybrid company. <laughs> because to me, it's just actually even more challenging. So, um, you know, we've really tried to think about how to invest in being the leader in remote and really think about, you know, having our, you know, our foot all the way through the door and, uh, you know, really making our team work in a way that's really compatible with like remote first thinking. I like that mindset. And we recently in a show talked about the advantages of, of working remote and, I know you'll agree, but I like what you just said. Really, one of the biggest benefits of having a remote team is you're no longer refined or forced to hire the best candidate in your community. Now you can hire the best candidate literally in the world for, for a position that you're looking to fill. So I think you've got the right mindset. And uh, as fast as your company is scaling, you're clear, clearly doing things right. So congratulations on all of the personal success you've had and also the success you've had in the recent time with Uncapped. Oh, thanks so much. You're welcome. Well, I'm excited to have you here because what we're going to talk about is, is the niche that Uncapped is really all about. It's all about raising money for e-commerce companies. And today we're going to talk about investing in D2C brands and fundraising strategies for e-commerce companies. For those of you watching our video, I'm going to pop up a outline of today's show talk. If you're listening on the podcast, I'll quickly read through this so you can understand where our conversation will go today so you can sit back, relax, and take in all of Asher's insights. So today we're going to talk about a few of Asher's experiences raising capital and the lessons that he's he's learned. We'll talk about what options founders have to raise money. We'll talk about how e-commerce founders can best make use of capital, how much founders should raise. I'm sure that, you know, based on his experience and out of all the companies and clients that Asher has helped, I'm sure he has some to do and not to do and some great examples he can share about where you kind of want to be, depending on what your company is. And then he'll obviously share along the way some advice for founders raising money. So let's just start off with a little bit of a conversation and dialogue, Asher, about your personal experiences with, you know, raising capital and some of the lessons you've learned, you know, the what not to do. And obviously, this is something that you've made a career out of. So you've taken all of your personal lessons, I'm sure, into account as you've been helping your clients along the way. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, my, my background is in startups. This is the you know third business that I've started over the years. And the biggest problem I always had was getting the funding that I needed. So, you know, working with hundreds of e-commerce founders, you know, I've seen how they've struggled too. So, you know, it's a dream to get to work on Uncapped. Every day I get to help other entrepreneurs, you know, solve this challenge, get the funding that they need. And, you know, our first customers were also my friends. So from the start, we really tried to create a product that is actually really friendly, that's fair, that's fast, that's transparent. You know, it's the product I wish always existed when I was fundraising. And, you know, it was really born out of the frustrations I faced as well when I was launching you know, my first business. Um, I started my first one in 03 
and I was young and I was just trying to raise a hundred K and I probably had a hundred meetings and got a hundred no's. And I didn't wow. want to take financing from the banks because they all wanted personal guarantees and venture capital. It wasn't ideal either because, you know, I didn't have a track record or connections or that warm introduction. And so I just missed out on growth opportunities. And, um, you know, when it came to raising money for my second business, I kind of thought I had it all figured out and I raised millions in venture capital money, but then I also got terribly diluted. And I just started to realize that the options for me were really limited and it was just depressing to think that you could work so hard and then own so little of your company. And so, yeah, I thought there must be a better way and, you know, which is where, you know, Uncap came from really to try to bring a fairer alternative to funding, um, to entrepreneurs. I like that. And obviously the name says it all, right? It's uncapped. It's untouched. It's the ceiling, you know, the sky is the limit. Um, I like that you had a hundred meetings, sadly, and, and got a hundred no's because we all know that some of the most successful people didn't start off on a path that was just, you know, handed to them. So I think through the no's, you've obviously learned a lot um, through diluting your company and going the venture capital route, you obviously learned a lot. So let's talk about the options that you see most fit right now in today's world in terms of raising money um, for founders of e-commerce companies. Well, historically, you know, founders have really had two main options to get capital for their business. You know, the first is debt, which is, you know, going to a bank and applying for a loan. And if you think about that model, you know, debt was really designed for unlocking liquidity out of fixed assets, right? But that's actually something that most, you know, high growth companies don't have a lot of. And so the model is really dependent on credit scores and personal guarantees and, you know, requires business plans and, you know, kind of a meeting uh, bank managers trying to convince them about your idea. And that can, that can have its challenges. Um, on the other side is, is equity. But, you know, equity, of course, is one of the most expensive ways to grow a business. Uh, it means that you're giving away 20 to 30 percent of your business with each round of funding. And for some use cases, it can be really silly, right? So in some cases, if you're running an e-commerce business where you know that if you put, you know, one pound in, you're going to get, say, three pounds out in terms of a return on your ad spend, uh, then it's really silly to give away 20 percent of your company, which you'll never mm -hmm. be able to get back. And so the idea behind Uncap was sort of realize that, you know, the existing options, they don't really match how an e-commerce business runs. In fact, to a lot of the folks out there, the way an e-commerce business runs would, would just seem crazy, right? Like a good e-commerce business is reinvesting every pound into marketing and inventory because they see that opportunity. But, you know, when you go to a bank with that cash flow profile, they think, what are you doing? You know, they think uh, it's a business that's not working. But, you know, in fact, when you start to actually understand how e-commerce businesses work, you're able to create, you know, another alternative. And, and that's what really Uncapped is about. It's providing, you know, pioneering like a new way to raise capital for a business. Interesting. So let me ask you then, um, what is the biggest mistake that you see your clients before they get your help, right? What's the biggest mistake that you see small, let's say small to mid-size, even startup e-commerce companies? What's the biggest mistake? Is it that they are doing those two things you mentioned? They are going to banks and, and doing that route, or they are giving away too much of their business? Would you say that that's like the common thing that most people do um, before they get your help? Well, you know, a really a common piece of advice I have for folks is yeah. to really consider whether they should be raising money at all. And like, mm -hmm. that's a funny thing to say, you know, as being someone who's in the business of, of lending people capital. Um, but I've always really believed that, you know, uh, entrepreneurs often think success is tied to, you know, how much money that you raise. And you can't mm -hmm. blame them because if you go to like the newspaper headlines or, you know, open up TechCrunch or e-commerce retail, they'll be talking about all these businesses that have raise tons of money. But, you know, true success as an entrepreneur is really about building a profitable business and owning more of it, you know, even if we don't necessarily celebrate that enough. So I think that's the first thing, you know, I, I see entrepreneurs just saying, hey, if I don't raise money for this business, I am going to fail. I just won't be able to do it. And in fact, actually knowing how you'd be able to run your business if you weren't able to raise money um, really changes the game because it removes the desperation and it actually makes you much more investable. So I think that's a first starting point of like what you want to keep in mind. 
That's interesting. It's kind of like, it's, it's kind of like that old school mindset when people can tell you're desperate, right? They're less likely, right? To want to be a part of what you're doing. If you come from a place of scarcity, you're less likely to attract abundance. So I think you're right. Figuring out what's best for your company and, and your goals and your business plan, figuring that out from like that personal standpoint so that you come across from a place of abundance and a place of confidence um, that probably kind of shifts the whole like mindset as well and, and shifts the energy too. Oh, I totally agree with you. I, you know, I think in effect, there's like two main drivers behind how you get funded in the early days. Mm -hmm. One is FOMO, which is like fear of missing out. Right. And the other one is your growth metrics. And, you know, it's as you say, right, um, fundraising, it's, it's a sales process. And when you come across desperate in a sale, it's very hard to attract it, right? So there is that element of, of scarcity and you know, attracting investors in that way, at least in the early stages. As you come later on and you have more evidence about how solid your business is and what your metrics are, that can become more and more important. The interesting thing about Uncapped, of course, is though, you know, we're trying to help founders get away from this game, you know, by, by changing the way that they go in and raise their capital where, you know, we don't require them to make a business plan or come and pitch to us or, you know, have a bunch of coffees. We, you know, connect to the data sources that the company already uses to run. And off the back of that, we can make a data-driven decision about how much funding they're eligible for, which is usually within 24 hours. And so it removes a lot of the bias that's kind of inherent in the way that companies normally raise. Yeah. But also means that, you know, traditionally in venture capital, 0.05% of companies actually raise money that way. So it's opening it up, democratizing access to a much larger group of, you know, online sellers and entrepreneurs and, you know, getting capital, I think, to a lot of really great businesses that otherwise might be overlooked. What's interesting about the way that you run Uncapped and the opportunities you're really affording a lot of different companies is, from my own personal experience, sometimes people with the best ideas don't always present the best. So the fact that you almost take that aspect out of it and you base all of your decisions on almost a data algorithm type of a situation kind of gives everybody a fair opportunity, whether they're a great in-person presenter or not, whether they have this outgoing personality and can kind of talk their way through a coffee meeting or not. Uh, we all know that you can't really, can't fake the funk when it comes to data, but we always know that when it comes to presenting or personalities, you know, certain people can schmooze better than others. So I like the idea that you offer um, your services on a really a level playing field. It doesn't really matter what you're your experiences. And I think it's also about location, you know, to add to that, you know, it used to be if you want to raise capital, you know, you needed to be in London, New York, or San Francisco. And, you know, with Uncapped, you know, 70% of the people we fund are not in a major city. And, you know, they're outside those markets. And it's, I think, you know, really democratized capital in that way as well, because, you know, it makes it it's a fully online process. And there's so many great businesses that aren't based in those places, that if you're now able to help them access capital, it's a really incredible thing, especially when you think about the fact that, you know, to me, I really believe that, you know, entrepreneurs are the people who are solving, you know, society's biggest problems, whether it's, you know, the challenges we have with the environment or the problems we're having in the economy right now, it's going to be entrepreneurs who kind of get us out of that, that hole. And so by enabling more of those people to get the funding that they need, create more jobs, I think that's a really beautiful thing. Fantastic. Well, let me ask you then, the next little nugget that I'd love to talk about is how e-commerce funders can make the best use of their capital. Do you have any insights or experience in, in that um, in that regard that you'd like to share with our audience? Absolutely. Well, you know, I, I would say the first thing, if you think about capital, it's about like capitalizing on opportunity, right? And, and I think there's two main points in a business life cycle when you want to, you know, inject capital. One might be, you know, it's actually at the beginning of, of the life cycle where it's, you know, a business where you're, you're pro trying to prove product market fit, you have a great idea and you want to, you know, get it to a place where you can get it to now something that can scale and you need some initial money to get it off the ground. The other is where you already have a product with product market fit. Maybe you're generating good unit economics, you're seeing some revenue, but actually you want to grow faster and unlock that potential growth. 
And you know, where Uncapped comes into it, we're really focused on helping businesses that are you know, already doing 10K of monthly sales. So they're at this moment where it's not side of desk for them anymore, right? 10K is at the point where you can start paying yourself a salary. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's businesses that have been working for at least six months. So it means they have a bit of a history in doing this, but now they want to grow without, um, you know, causing them to lose a piece of their company, right? Or, or what we call being diluted, having to give away shares of their business. We can basically add more fuel to the fire without taking a piece of the pie. And, you know, there's, there's tons of businesses out there that are like that, where if they were able to get some additional capital, they could unlock a lot of growth. I could give you some examples, but, you know, I think it's a, um, you know, a really common situation. Well, when we talk about raising money, what are your thoughts on how much a company should raise? Does that, I guess, what are the factors that you would ask a company to ask themselves, right? Uh, What does a company need to look at when they're saying, okay, we're going to go into this uh, and we really need to raise 50,000 or we really need to raise half a million? What are the contributing factors when a company is making that decision or that goal? Well, I think in thinking about how much capital to raise is, you know, really understanding your business's cash profile and like where you are, and especially in e-commerce, where you are in terms of seasonality. So like in the early days of running an e-commerce business, you have challenging terms from your suppliers. So you might need some funds to support you with that. So you're thinking about that factor, but you also have fundamentally, you know, some probably really peak periods in terms of when you're going to need additional inventory or where you're going to want to double down on marketing. And having some planning and thinking about that is really powerful. So you could time it to the right moment because, you know, what we do also know about e-commerce businesses is that when you do have a business that's working, it can grow incredibly fast. You know, we work sometimes with entrepreneurs where they have five people on their team and they're doing millions and millions of sales. And uh, that's kind of one of the beautiful things about e-commerce. But I think if you're thinking about how much money to raise, um, it depends on the source as well. If you're, if you're raising money from equity, you know, no founder, you know, wants to be diluted, but I think a common mistake entrepreneurs make is to focus too heavily on avoiding dilution by raising less money because another common problem, you know, is failure to build enough cushion for the unexpected, right? It's pretty common for product development to take a little bit longer than you might've expected for sales to ramp a little bit slower. And I think raising a bit more cash can provide a cushion and it's often a smart way to decrease overall dilution. On and the you flip know, side, um, you know, what, what we're trying to do with Uncapped is a little bit different again, because yeah. the way we work is that we can give you an offer for capital today. Um, you could, you know, or you'd apply today, you might get an offer tomorrow. But then as well, you can come back to us because we're not having this drawn out DD process where it takes months and months to close around. If you actually now realize, actually, I need more funding because I have an amazing opportunity like I could buy some more inventory. I could accelerate my marketing. Things are taking off. You can come back to us again and we can do another deal the next week. And so I think, you know, we're also trying to change a little bit about how entrepreneurs think about planning for cash to a little bit, be a bit more dynamic, which is, you know, how businesses actually work. And I think to add to what you just shared, there's a lot of speed bumps, I guess we can call them right now. Um, because of the pandemic that we all just, you know, experienced and are working our way through. We know that supply chain issues are affecting hundreds and millions of businesses um, across the globe. We know that, you know, materials have, in, especially like in the sense of like wood, have reached all-time highs. So one thing I think that e-commerce businesses and founders need to remember when they're putting their plan into effect is really to plan for the unexpected. Because as you mentioned, things can change quickly. Uh, Businesses could grow quickly. Imagine thinking, okay, I just need to, you know, let's just, for example, I need this $250,000, you know, um, let's call it funding grant from from Uncapped because I want to make sure I have enough of A, B, and C. Um, But let's just say product C ends up taking off like crazy. You don't want to be in that situation where you're, you know, well, great. I have no more money now. I have all this extra inventory of A and B, no money to get C made. You know, you don't want to end up in situations where you are, you know, shooting yourself in the foot because you didn't, you know, you didn't do any prediction. You have no idea what your customers needs really are. You want to kind of get your ducks in a row, but also I think plan for the unexpected. You, I feel like asking for more money to, to, to kind of like give yourself a buffer is probably 
safe advice, would you say? Or absolutely. You- I think also it's kind of getting ahead of some of those things. So, you know, I, I know so many e-commerce entrepreneurs who were just burned in the last period because of supply chain issues where, you know, they were getting to Black Friday and they had a huge container shipment from China stuck on the ocean somewhere. And they were so frustrated because they know that they're missing out on all these incredible sales. And like learning from that, they then have decided to say, well, actually, I'm going to increase my inventory order. And so we had one entrepreneur who doubled their inventory order, negotiated a 10% discount from their supplier for doing so, and then funded that additional inventory with Uncapped, where they paid a 6% fee, and we charge a 6% flat fee on the capital that we advance. And then we're able to pocket the difference and actually improve their margins. Fantastic. And so I think if you can be you know, creative and innovative about how taking what would be a problem and actually turning it around into an opportunity, those are some of the best uses of capital. Let me ask you, and, and I hope it's okay to ask you this, but as someone who has a lot of experience in the film industry and uh, the creative world, do you have any thoughts on some of the, you know, crowd raising platforms that are out there? Have you seen those to be helpful in certain scenarios or have you maybe seen them to be less helpful and maybe more of a, um, a not, not so great situation for? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I actually, Ray did one of the largest crowdfunding rounds myself for previous business. Um, and, uh, you know, it was a really interesting experience. You know, crowdfunding is where you use a small amount of capital from a large number of individuals to finance a new business venture. It's a lot less exclusive, right? Because a successful campaign, it really validates your business idea. It builds your customer base. And it, I think it works really well for B2C businesses. And you know, that's my last company. It did a crowd fundraise exactly for that reason, where we wanted to get our customers you know, buying the product and becoming advocates. But on the flip side of it, I would say it is totally nerve wracking. You know, you, you've got a threshold to meet and it's all or nothing. And consequently, you know, the consequence oh, wait, you know what? of failure not, is, is really not, severe. Not to interrupt you, but when you said that you have a threshold to meet and it's all or nothing, explain what you meant by that, because maybe I'm uh, unfamiliar. Well, typically in crowdfunding is you have a target that you're mm-hmm. trying to get to. Um, so you'll, you'll set out at the beginning of it a minimum target of the funding that you're going to raise. And if you don't hit the target, you know, you don't get the capital. No, I didn't realize that. That's fascinating to me. And I could understand how that would certainly inject a little bit of anxiety into the entire process. Because can you imagine or can you imagine getting 90% uh, of, of your 95% of your projected goal and then not getting a dollar because you didn't quite, you know, quite hit it? That's crazy. Yeah. And, and it's kind of in contrast, if obviously, if you're turned down by a lender or a venture capitalist, you can always seek out another VC. But if your crowdfunding campaign fails, it can be really hard to recover. And, you know, most platforms, they don't let you relist again. And a failed crowdfunding campaign, at least to like the majority of angels or VCs, either signals um, your plan or your execution isn't good enough. So I think there's, you know, there's pros and there's cons to applying that fundraising method. It, it takes a lot of work. And typically, um, those platforms also charge about a 6% fee. Um, but you're also giving away equity. So not only are you paying that fee on the capital, you're also giving equity on top. So to me, when there's other funding options, like if you consider uncapped, we similarly you know, offer a 6% fee, but we don't have to take any equity. So I think it's it's good to have it as another option and to like consider, and there might be good moments for doing that, say you're like earlier in your journey, um, or, you know, you have a real reason that you want to engage your community, but otherwise there might be a better tool. And, you know, uh, it's really making sure you're aware of all those options. That all makes complete sense. I'll tell you what, just the anxiety that I would feel if that was the case for me, <laughs> that, that alone is, is reason enough for me to say, that's not going to be the best choice, even if I did want to engage with the community, because I feel now with social media, there are so many ways to engage with the community, um, and it doesn't have to um, doesn't have to include a crowdfunding um, situation. Well, listen, this has been a very insightful conversation. Um, I feel like we're just scratching the tip of the iceberg. So I do want to share your company website with our audience, and of course, how the audience can connect with you if they're interested in learning more about what Uncapped does and uh, 
and uh, would like your help maybe with uh, raising some money themselves. But let's end our talk with any other advice you'd like to share for founders as it pertains to, to raising money for their e-commerce business. Do you have any well, kind of final thoughts? Yeah. Well, I think one of the biggest things is, is to, you know, realize that you need to have a, a winning fundraising mindset. You know, fundraising isn't easy. In fact, it can be one of the most frustrating time draining activities that you as a founder undertake, you know, in those early days. And especially if you have a small team, it can take up, you know, a lot more time than you'd ever want it to. And, uh, you know, especially if you're raising equity, there isn't really a shortcut. So I think developing, you know, a, a fundraising mindset where you are planning ahead, you know, realizing that it's a process, it's not going to necessarily be painless, but, you know, the earlier you start planning and developing those relationships, the better off you're going to be. But the other part of it, I think, is also expecting rejection. You kind of have to embrace it. I, you know, I talked to you about my my hundred no's that I got, and you just have to learn, I think, to not take that personally because rejection is going to happen for, for good reasons, for dumb reasons, and many times for reasons that will forever remain a mystery. So, you know, practice makes per perfect because, you know, every meeting is another form of practice that makes you better for the next one. And of course, you know, learn from the past. Um, you, know, you can analyze what was said, improve your mistakes and all of that. But of course, if you want to skip all of that and you want to try to find another way of funding, um, we're also really keen to talk to people, especially, uh, you know, to think about how we can help them grow um, and, you know, get through the process a little bit quicker. Now, let me ask you, if someone's listening right now and they're really excited about what Uncapped does, what is that first step? Is it visiting the website? Is there a, you know, easy online application to get acquainted with Uncapped? How does the process start with Uncapped? Uh, yeah, so it, it's all done online. It's super easy. You go to our website, weareuncapped.com, um, or you connect with me on LinkedIn if you wish, and you can, you know, start an application um, and as I said, uh, it takes a few minutes to like fill in some basic information about yourself. We connect to those accounts that you're already using to run your business. And, you know, off the back of it, we can usually make you an offer in 24 hours. If we have the right info. So I think uh, it's, it couldn't be any easier. I think especially compared to the other funding options, you know, that I had to go through. So yeah, I'm really hopeful that, you know, more people will give it a try and kind of realize, I think, uh, yeah, that once you, once you use that approach, um, you kind of wonder, why did you try to do some of the other ones before? Um, well, at least that's you know, the goal we're trying to get people to. Well, and you mentioned that your business is fairly new. So I think that for all of the um, businesses that you have helped, you are really a new opportunity, a new way to achieve funding. So I think there are a lot of people out there who are thankful that you created this company and uh, you really have created almost another avenue for businesses. And you know, again, coming from the creative place that, uh, you know, my career has has taken me in acting, I know, gosh, for every 20 auditions, I got to no, know, I get that one. Yes. So I understand that, you know, whether it's raising capital or just, you know, even getting a business meeting or even getting into, um, let's say you've got a great product, you've got the e-commerce going, but you're trying to get into some other stores or on some other, you know, selling platforms. It can be a very, long process as you shared. It can be very disheartening sometimes. There's a lot of letdowns, but if you have that positive mindset and um, you learn from the past and then take advantage of the new opportunities that come your way and seek out new ways to do things also like your company uncapped, then I think at the end of the day, you're doing everything you can and you're in the place where you need to be right now. So I love that. So for those of you listening on the podcast, I will share the exact URL so that you can make sure to find the right uncapped page. It is going to be us.weare, W-E-A-R-E, uncapped, U-N-C-A-P-P-E, D.com. So us.weareuncapped.com. Now I know that you said your company is remote. I'm wondering if I get the US when I search here because I'm in the US. Is that is that probably true? Otherwise, yeah, exactly. So we, are we have different websites for, for different countries. Um, but uh yeah, so if you actually just go to weareuncapped.com, you'll you'll get directed to the you'll right get one directed. If, you're not, if you don't happen to be in the US. Um, but uh but yeah, you'll find us, find us regardless. Perfect. And then let's share your LinkedIn profile. If you guys are looking to connect with Asher, maybe you have some questions that were sparked after today's podcast, or you're interested in knowing more about how to connect with him or Uncapped, you can find him on LinkedIn. And the spelling of his name is A-S-H-E-R, Asher, Ismail, I-S-M-A-I-L. 
Asher, it has been fantastic to connect with you today for our chat on how to help different founders and e-commerce companies with their fundraising strategies. I'm, I want to congratulate you again on all of the success that you have experienced as the co-founder of Uncapped. It sounds like you are just scratching the tip of the iceberg in terms of how many different people that you can help um, fund their businesses. Before we go, though, let's just, I'm just, just for fun, is there... Um, a business, a product, or an idea or two that you've helped, and you don't have to share who it is, but is there like, I don't know, do you have like a little box of like businesses that you've helped where you're like, that's a cool business. Like, I'm glad I got to help fund fund their venture or fund their product or fund their idea. Do you have any? Yeah, fun? there's so many. There's so many case studies on our website. Um, but I think, you know, one of our, our first customers was a sustainable fashion brand called Hedowin. And I think they're just like so many e-commerce entrepreneurs that are working in fashion. They had to just basically struggle with like juggling cash between inventory and marketing mm -hmm. because effectively they had to wait for the current season to sell so they can invest the returns in the next. And that just really limited their growth. And I, and I see you nodding your head and, you know, you just know so many yeah. entrepreneurs who are stuck in that cycle. And, you know, Alex and Anna, um, they're incredibly savvy founders and they both came from finance backgrounds and they had looked at all these different funding options, but they really wanted something that was more affordable. And they signed up with us for an advance of 50 K, um, kind of at the end of last year, they used the funds to increase you know, their marketing and their inventory. And then with that new funding, they grew a hundred and or 11,000% compared to the previous year. So 11,000%. Wow. That's and incredible. It just shows like what happens when you put, you know, the right entrepreneur with the right business and suddenly you give them the capital that they need to grow. And yeah, those are the stories that really are, we're really excited about, you know, and really try to find, you know, more business like that, that we can support where actually, if you just give them you know, that basic thing that they need to take their idea further, they can really take it to the next level. So, I love that. You're leaving me with such warm and good feelings. I feel like Uncapped is the sunshine of the business world. They can have the right soil. They can have the water. They can have the seed. Sometimes they just need that little extra dose of sunshine to blossom. And once they do, the sky is the limit. I love that. Well, Asher, I want to thank you so much for joining us today as our guest expert on digital marketing intelligence for Shopify Ask the Experts. You brought some incredible insights. And again, as I mentioned, I want to congratulate you on all of your success. And I want to invite our audience to connect with you on LinkedIn or, of course, weareuncapped.com is the website for Uncapped if you want to learn more about how to fund your business. Asher, this has been a pleasure. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your, the year and uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on what Uncapped does and uh, your, your success into the future. Uh, thanks so much for having me. My pleasure. Thanks so much. What an awesome conversation with Asher Ismail from Uncapped. He brought all of his insights, past experience, and a lot of information to us in terms of how to invest, how to fundraise, how to get the capital we need to take an idea or take an e-commerce brand to the next level. Sharing an example of one of his first clients gaining 11,000% of an increase um, after just a $50,000 um, you know, bump from Uncapped. Such a cool uh, example. And uh, again, I do want to share with you his website so that you can find out more. It is going to be weareuncapped.com. And again, please take a moment to connect with Asher, Asher Ismail on LinkedIn. And if you connect, make sure to drop an email or a message to let him know that you saw him on the Engage podcast. Well, that is all for today's show. I want to thank you so much for listening in or watching if you're watching our video version. A quick reminder to check out www.ngagge.com if you're looking for an opportunity to try our Engage SMS messaging app for Shopify, a great opportunity to increase your sales, you know, promote to your customers, gain into what your customers' needs are and, of course, communicate with them. We know that SMS messaging has a 98% open rate. So if you're not taking advantage, you're leaving a lot of business on the table. So check out our app. There's a free demo on the website, and you can also sign up for a 30-day free trial. If you are excited about what you heard on today's show, make sure you check out the Engage Digital Marketing Library. 
We've got a podcast library filled with wonderful episodes, just like today's episode with Asher Ismail. You can find out more about digital marketing strategy and other opportunities to take your e-commerce business to the next level, especially if you're using Shopify. On behalf of myself and the entire team at Engage, I want to thank you so much for joining me for today's show. We'll see you next time.